In this lecture, we're going to discuss estrogen production and ovulation. And so, in order for ovulation to happen, we need two main components. So one is that we need our, our secondary oocyte, or our egg, and we also need our mature dominant follicle. And so what the mature dominant follicle is doing, it's helping to nourish and develop the, the secondary oocyte. Okay, and so in order for it to develop and mature, the hormone that we need mainly is estrogen. Okay, so we're gonna talk about how is estrogen produced. But the first thing we need to look at is how does this secondary oocyte get here into the fallopian tube so these structures here this is known as the fimbriae and so what the fimbriae will do is they'll bring the egg here and and bring it here in, into the uh, fallopian tube but in order to do that we have to break down these different layers here that are that are nourishing the secondary oocyte okay so this layer that i have here in blue this is what's known as the theca cells and what's drawn here in red these are the granular cells Okay, so in order to get it here into the fallopian tube, we, we have what's called our LH surge. And so luteinizing hormone, what it's gonna do, it's gonna bind here. Okay, so it's gonna bind here at the theca cells and activate metalloprotease enzymes. So ACE means enzyme. So we activate our metalloprotease enzymes that are going to help to um, break apart this mature follicle so that way we can get the secondary oocyte here into the fallopian tube. Okay, so now that we know how the egg gets into the fallopian tube, the next thing is um, back to estrogen. So how do we produce estrogen? Well, um, here within the brain, we have a couple different structures that are gonna help to help with the production of estrogen. And so in the hypothalamus, we have what's known as gonadotropin releasing hormone. So once the gonadotropin releasing hormone gets into the anterior pituitary, it releases FSH and LH. So follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. And FSH and LH, they're gonna get into the blood and get to their target tissue. So their target tissue is the ovaries. And so this is what I have drawn here. This here is the ovary. Okay, so once FSH and LH reach their target, these here are their targets. And so LH, its target is here as the, at the theca cells. And then FSH, its target is the granular cells. Okay, so what is the effect of this? Remember, what we're trying to do is get the production of estrogen. And so once LH binds to the theca cells, we activate the signaling cascade. So we get the production of our secondary messenger, cyclic AMP, which activates PKA. And then once we activate the PKA, we activate the enzyme that's necessary or that's required to produce our androgen. And what do we use as our starting material uh, for androgen? To produce this androgen, we use cholesterol. So we use cholesterol to produce this androgen, 
And what this androgen will do, it, it'll diffuse and get here into the granular cell. And this is where we can synthesize, draw it down here, it's already going out. We can synthesize our estrogen. But in order to do this, FSH has to bind to the granular cell for that to happen. And so the reason that um, estrogen is gonna be synthesized here is because it contains an enzyme known as aromatase. And the theca cells don't contain this enzyme here. Okay, so once um, estrogen is here within our follicle, our mature follicle, this is what helps to um, develop, to, to get to this point. We need estrogen to get to this point, okay? So we need estrogen to get to this point where we can get our mature dominant follicle, and then estrogen also gets into the blood and then has its effect uh, for the feminine characteristics. So it helps with the production of women's um, reproductive organs, like the development and everything. Okay, so now that we understand how estrogen is produced and you know, how we um, can synthesize it using cholesterol as our starting material, now what we want to get into is the phases or how we get how do we get our secondary oocyte and then our mature dominant follicle? Okay, so this secondary oocyte, what phase that is in, the secondary oocyte is going to be arrested in meiosis 2. More specifically, at metaphase 2. And so meiosis 2 is not going to be complete unless fertilization happens. So fertilization is when the sperm cell is going to um, penetrate the secondary oocyte and then we form our ovum. Or we, it's also known as a zygote. Okay, so metaphase 2 is, we're not going to complete it unless fertilization happens. Okay, so the secondary, the secondary oocyte is going to be um, stuck here in metaphase 2. Well, uh, what does the prime, the secondary oocyte come from? So it comes from a primary oocyte. So the primary oocyte, it's stuck in meiosis 1. More specifically, in prophase 1. And so the difference between here and here, the difference between the primary and the secondary oocyte is whether it's haploid or diploid. So the secondary oocyte, what we have are two, di two different haploid cells here. So this real small one is known as the polar body. So this is inactive, it's a polar body. And this is gonna be our secondary mature oocyte that we've already talked about. It's a, um, a haploid cell, okay? So within meiosis two and prophase one, we have a single diploid cell, okay? And so this secondary oocyte is only gonna be found in our mature follicle. So the mature follicle is what's gonna contain the secondary oocyte here. So I'll just draw it here. And the mature follicle has, um, it has defining features of it. Okay, so as I have shown here, right, it has all of these three different components. So the mature follicle, what it has is the layer of theca cells. It has the granular cells. And then it also contains this part that I drew here in green. So this is known as the antrum. So this is a, also another type of fluid here that's going to help to develop this, um, this oocyte, okay? 
and but the follicle has a couple different stages that it goes through. So the follicle starts off as a primary follicle, then becomes a secondary follicle, and then it finally becomes a mature follicle. And so in both of these, the primary and the secondary follicle, both of them, this is where we have our primary oocyte, okay? So the takeaway here, from what I said so far, the mature follicle contains the secondary oocyte and the primary and secondary follicle contain the primary oocyte. But the difference between primary and secondary relates to these different components like I like what we talked about here with the mature one. And so with the secondary follicle, it contains the granular cell and it also contains the DECA cell. Okay. So it also contains the DECA cells. But it does not contain the antrum. Okay, well what about the primary the primary follicle. Well, let's see. So, yeah, this, this. so the primary follicle only contains a single layer of the granular cells. So what it's going to have, let me just draw this out here. So it's going to have our primary oocyte that's diploid, two in. And then it's going to have one single layer of granular cells. And these granular cells are simple cuboidal. Because what's happening as it continues to develop, we're increasing the uh, granular cells, like the amount. So for instance, in the secondary, um, the secondary follicle, yeah, it contains the DECA cells, but it also contains multiple layers here of our granular cell. Okay. All right. So this here is a, a good stopping point, and then in the next lecture, we're going to discuss the ovarian cycle.